Greetings dear ones. I was asked a question on my Instagram account. A personal question as to why brutality happens in this world. Probably she saw some film Gangubai or something. I don't know about the film. And she said the inflicting suffering caused on the women, the brutality caused on the women, not just about the lust aspects, but the physical assaults done along with these brutality. Why she was, I think, perturbed. Why does this kind of brutality happen? And that too, why do humans do that? To that extent. Uh, animalistic tendency with an animalistic tendency why does this happen and uh, it scares the hell out of us and uh, how does one actually go about living in this kind of a world and you know how does one actually protect oneself and she has heard that the divine mother protects that mother Kali she has also heard that, I think obviously from our master, that uh, the mother, the divine mother like Mother Kali cannot come into a body. So if she cannot come into a body to protect us, she is asking a question whether I can uh, invoke the mother as a bodyguard. Because it's a, it's a jumbled up question, I thought I'll let me just uh, try to put my view on this. I wouldn't say this is my the ultimate answer or whatever. It's just my view. Do not trust me, do not believe me just like that. In none of my videos you believe just like that. You ponder over it, you contemplate over it. If something strikes from within and your conscience and consciousness answers it, affirms with it, then experiment with it and if you find truth in it believe it and make it a part of your life that's how i go about so my view is that because i'm telling my view from my personal experiences on this and how i have related with such kind of issues so i'm not talking from some bookish wisdom so see how it relates with you yeah as you said the brutality the brutality happens because obviously it's all karmic and we know all that stuff but to this extent uh, of brutality happens because of according to my senses. One is the animalistic tendency, obviously, uh, the, in, for held in the form of those people, very strong animalistic tendencies, perhaps come just from a previous animal birth or those tendencies have not gone. You know how animals are. They, they don't think of anything. They just... Uh, they absolutely have no empathy or any kind of compassion towards anything else. They they fulfill their desires, that's it. Their stomachs are full, that's it. Their lust is fulfilled, that's it. Their shelters are safe, that's it. Their offsprings are protected, that's it. And they care for nothing else. So this is called the animalistic tendencies. And these tendencies often ha come into humans because we are not just uh, exchanging human bodies. Birth after birth, it doesn't mean we are only taking human births. We are moving from species to species, sometimes even downgrading ourselves to lower uh, uh, wombs and having lower births like animals. And even worse than that is, you know, evilish kind of births in the lokas that are below the earth planes, the very lower dimension beings. So... We have all been into all this. It's not that um, we have never been. We have all been because this is what the part of the whole cosmos is, the whole play is about because the soul is to experience everything. Only when it experiences everything is the complete experience gained, including the negative experiences because only when you have negative experiences can you appreciate the positive experiences. So this is how the duality works and this is how you appreciate both sides of the dualities. So We have all been... And so there are souls who are also being into all kind of dimensions and taking birth again, uh, human births and having strong tendencies. And those strong tendencies continue to create havoc in the human minds and that is how they act upon. Now, this is one aspect which according to my understanding of life and how much I have learned from life. And the other aspect that I have learned from life is also that these 
humans may not be just the humans who are doing these kind of attacks or these kind of uh, having these kind of tendencies doing these kind of crimes uh, in a previous video i had also said that extreme crimes extreme crimes which has got no kind of sympathy which is very extreme and brutal in those cases uh, my view is that uh, there are some souls lower dimensional beings that do not have bodies and so they got to fulfill their desires very strong urges and desires so they take over the human some form of human beings where they can actually uh, act through them and you know gain the satisfaction through them so this also happens and in cases where uh, humans are very weak then they act through them in cases it can be seen those people uh, who commit these kind of crimes are mostly into drugs and alcohol and all that because this is the state when anything can enter easily and this is where they can dominate so this is another view of it now going into the brutality as i mentioned Uh, brutal means uh, no choice no pity nothing no mercy you just go about doing it now from the other end the worrying about how oh, why and how does this happen and uh, how am i safe and all that firstly we got to understand that these kind of activities happen where there is a strong connection of karmic karma it's a karmic connection and it has got to do with some karmic debts between those souls which have signed some contract to have that kind of a very drastic experience because of some karma so these are basically karmic very karmic it they are not just by fluke or just happening they have very strong karmic connections all these kind of uh, brutal and extreme kind of stuff so it's not very common like you know when you have millions of uh, population here it's not very common that uh, you are going to Uh, you know have it uh, in such large scale it it doesn't you you will you will find it's almost negligible when it compared to the whole population so it's very strong karmic stuff now about the protection aspect that uh, what we asked is first of all it's uh, according to me i don't find uh, i don't think that it's wise to look into such kind of movies to uh, you know ponder over these things and go into extreme kind of uh, that pain and uh, try to live that pain of somebody or relive that pain this is why i always suggest do not go and look into those movies or don't kind of uh, serials or episodes or telecasts or any stupid things on the internet or uh, in the cinema which can cause you some kind of unrest and sub that can uh what you call assault your uh, psyche and uh, rule over your mind take over your mind and give you unrest and make you scared and fearful and doubtful and all those things do not do not go into that because it's not needed now if you are curious and if you want to look because especially people who look into all the dark uh, Uh, net series and all all this you know it's it's very curious out of curiosity people get in there but please do understand these are laws of attraction if something has to happen normally these things have to uh, get into our psyche and remain uh, lingering for a long long while and you know what happens is when you linger over something when you ponder over something it actually the mind is is a magnet it kinds of starts attracting those things so it, it it doesn't matter whether you like that subject or don't like that subject or what it is the mind just attracts that's how the universe is everything that you ask for everything that you seek everything that you ask and seek is what everything that you indulge in whatever you indulge in day in and day out all the time you are into it your whole mind body emotions your soul every cell of yours if it is reverberating reverberating in that in that kind of state of what you see from your external um, environment through your five senses whatever you capture through your five senses affects your mind and intellect and emotions very strongly so 
if you ponder and live on those kind of situations whatever that situation may it may be even a horror movie i strongly desist people i i recommend and i always advise parents not to entertain these kind of movies and not to uh, entertain or fill in your children don't don't see with children horror movies it's a fad it's a fashion that people families go out for uh, horrible kind of movies and sh- expose their children to all this kind of uh, this so children think this is normal when their parents are doing it when, when the whole crowd is doing it so don't expose them to such kind of wrong ideas where then the children start uh, easily looking into such things behind your back also and you wouldn't know about it how do they go into this because the mind is very curious like a monkey it always wants to experiment and explore lot of things especially these kind of dark things it always loves exploring so there's a certain kind of thrill and fantasy into it so i would suggest those who are aware of these things not not to get into it stay away from that stay away not out of fear but because of just the understanding that the science of how the mind and life works if you know that something that lingers very strongly and you can attract it into your experience why would you want to get into those kind of stuff so do not get too much carried away with these things first of all avoid it and even if you have to see it i think you have to be completely detached and very strong if you are you want to see it like seeing a horror film and laughing over the horror film is another thing than seeing a horror film and being so scared about it laughing over this horror films like my master <laughs> once said uh, that um, somebody uh, you know in the uh, he saw somewhere on the te- te- television or something that uh, some horror show where Uh, the cat eyed person is there and you know marks on the face and mouth is this way and this is that way this is that you know all kind of uh, tactics done on uh, the body and uh, face and weird weird things and blood oozing out and all that so he said uh, uh, i have never seen <laughs> a spirit like that i mean the yogis and um, the masters are people who have Uh, lived their lives in uh, wilderness my master is one of them who, have, who has lived years together in deserted isolated places and and he 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 did his tapas he did his austerities in uh, rajasthan in one of the most uh, dark areas where there are all such kind of stuff and <laughs> on it's famous for all this the dark mountains there the aravalli ranges are known for all that so he he has lived all his life there so out of his experience he was telling uh, you know i have never seen uh, a bhoot like that <laughs> he was mocking so these are people these are masters who can laugh over such thing because they know its stupidity that's one thing so if you can if you are really strong and if you can laugh over it then you can watch it for as an entertainment but if you are getting adversely affected then it's stupidity to um, put a pillow on your face and then peep through that pillow and keep looking as to what these things are and especially such kind of films where there is lot of brutality towards women or crime or murders and all that you enjoy looking into it and then sit complaining that my you know i'm perturbed why does this happen how does this happen i mean i'm so disturbed who asked you to get into all that you know in this world there is all kind of uh, experiences all kind infinite possibilities are there infinite the experiences infinite experiences and how many million people those many kind of experiences you cannot generalize everybody has different experiences and that means we are open to everything all the options but what options happen in our life depends on what we focus on so out of everything why choose this kind of stuff being aware of it is another thing okay you know you understand you are updated with all these things that's fine but then going deep into it i wouldn't recommend now the third aspect of the protection thing that you asked the protection will happen only when you uh, the aspect will come into your mind only when you are jumped into all these things you know and then you are disturbed by it so in one uh, in simple terms i would say that on one side you are creating certain kind of unwanted experiences and then on the other side you want protection for it 
so both these can be avoided if you simply stay neutral or don't get into it or if the fear is lurking or if there is some kind of fear that is lurking uh, if you don't have these habits of going into all these kind of um, brutal stuff and still if there is some fear lurking or uh, some kind of psychosis or perhaps some samskaras from previous life or something from previous life that is bothering then yes there are people who take the protection of the divine forces there are people who shield themselves in many many ways there are people who stay in the strong or of their gurus <laughs> so if you have a guru then obviously you can you can be in the strong or of your guru but then you got to uh, use your common sense also on how to deal with these things the divine mother and the divine father yes they are the most powerful ultimate power the ultimate source the shakti the mother what better what who more powerful can be than your mother the mother is always very protective of their children so it depends on how you vibe with your mother so if the divine force the divine mother if you can vibe well and communicate and become one with that force and be a part of that the the mother as a child if you are bhava if you are emotions if your intentions if your feelings are all like that that like i am the protected child of my powerful divine mother and if you carry that kind of a strong feeling very deep within your psyche then obviously and very surely you are going to create that kind of a powerful protective shield believe it or not that happens because you are connecting with that powerful force and Uh, with your intention it's your free will you are giving permission to because without your permission nobody will just come and protect you nobody will come because if you are, you are uh, the entire life is dominated by free will so you uh, free will governs all the lives free will means freedom you have freedom to do whatever you want choose evil or choose choose god no god will come and jump in front of you and say no don't do that i'm here choose me because of the freedom of choice so that freedom of choice is what you got to exert the free will your permission has to be given it, the even the source needs your permission so you have to put out that intent that i am protected i am the divine child of my father my mother the divine father divine mother whichever form you take that in and tatastu so be it it will happen now the person also said that you know you can't uh, the mother cannot get into a human body very true gurudev said this i remember why did he say this you can't get into the mother cannot get into a body normally we see people you know and they say the mother has come in the body and they act in a certain way you know the kriyas and all that happening so i think it was because of that the master once said because in one of the event somebody said that somebody gets uh, the mother in her body and she goes into a trance and she throws around and she does a lot of things which are uh, weird and that is the time the master said that do you think the mother comes enters into a human body very true he said the one who has created this srishti the one who has created this whole creation it's absurd to think that from the creation is it's withdrawn and it gets into one body it's all human minds play it these could be lower beings these could be other beings which are limited which have their limitations which have got into that person like i mentioned in the start of this video there are all kind of possibilities good bad and evil whatever it is these are the limited beings that do all these kind of thing the divine mother something like the divine mother doesn't get into anybody's body it's a very lowly kind of uh, thinking that you know the creator the divine mother has entered into somebody but someone's body that's because our mind's tendency you know we we create this uh, dual aspect like mother is somewhere sitting somewhere and from there she has come and entered into this all happens in duality but in reality the divine mother is a cosmic force it's the shakti it's energy it's consciousness it's 
conscious energy you know prevailing in this entire cosmos which doesn't do such kind of acts <laughs> it is already prevailing in that person also who has it maybe it's not highlighted or it's not uh, come up or the quantity is very low because the other evilish is uh, evilish tendencies are dominating but there is an aspect of the shakti within also in the dominant form so apart from that nothing of this sort happens so it's actually funny to think that the mother gets into somebody's body i remember him also telling to get an aspect of that mother the force of that shakti into your body do you even know what it means like for example there are people who do ugra sadhanas the uh, the fiercest sadhanas to invoke and invibe the fiercest forces of the mothers the mother has fierce forms the das dasma vidya if you see the ten forms the ugra forms of the mother like <laughs> ma kali ma dumavati you know all these there are multiple bagla mukhi you can see all those ten forms so somebody who does that kind of sadhana needs to have nerves of steel i also remember somebody asked gurudev can we do madhumavati sadhana sadhana of fierce form madhumavati is very fierce because all the forces all the shakti has a male aspect madhumavati has only the female aspect very powerful so uh, it's like you, you are not founded well you, it's like a force a uh, tremendous force which and you need uh, the shiva aspect the masculine aspect also to root you so if not it's very 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 fierce so somebody asked can we do the mahati sadhana so gurudev just said master said yes but before that make your nerves of steel <laughs> it means the energy the nadis if that kind of force enters your body your body will explode <laughs> so the body mind has to be first prepared for such kind of sadhana so you said can i uh, as the mother as a bodyguard why bodyguard bodyguard is business it's commerce <laughs> the commerce you are telling mother you are making a deal with mother come and be my bodyguard and do, do you really think that we can call the almighty and make them our bodyguard <laughs> better than that a better term i would use is become the child of that parent of that force become the child of shiva become the child of shakti and ask your father demand as a father when you become a child you have all the right to demand protection <laughs> i'm telling you you have all the right as a child to demand protection cry even 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 to throw tantrums to your mother and father that you need something i'm telling you you have it's your divine right but first you got to become eligible as a child so that bhava that emotion is very important to bring that bhava in you and treat the mother as a mother and then i am telling you if you don't even have to ask for separately for protection because if you have taken the mother as your mother it becomes the mother's divine duty to protect the child are you getting that so all happens rest of the things happen but still people do ask for protection in that manner so i would say go with the bhava of not duality that you are here behind you is your mother the dual force from somewhere you have called the mother and from somewhere the mother has come and is now standing behind you these are all dualistic uh, acts of the mind rather than that what i would suggest is go with the advaita bhava go with the non dualistic bhava feel the mother and feel yourself in the womb of the mother the co- you, we are already in the cosmic womb this is a cosmic womb <laughs> the big cosmic womb of the divine mother we are already in this womb is it like that you bring that bhava it's from my experiences that you know i have done these couple of things throughout my life especially when times many years back when i felt harassed uh, when i felt um, i was uh, 
vulnerable to too many attacks from the ways i do not understand and i needed protection there were times when i've invoked mother kali i've been to dakshineshwar quite some time and that is one force that i relate to very strongly as my mother mother kali so i know she's very powerful very very powerful because uh, the time i started feeling that my dna and her dna my, you, know, you know like a child it's it's like you are born out of that mother and she is there that cosmic force is looking over you just that kind of a feeling is enough and those problems went away i never did any kind of sadhana i never invoked her i never did yes i did pray to her as you pray to your mother as you plead to your mother i did do all those things and i had beautiful experiences in dakshineshwar when i was in dakshineshwar so those all made my uh, experiences very strong and my understanding that yes she is there if you need her if you call out to her so you can do that you can do that you can build that because you mentioned about mother kali i am talking about mother kali now somebody else might be thinking about some other form of mother not the ugra but some samya roop of the mother maybe ma parvati maybe sita maiya somebody who is little more maybe the virgin mother mary i have had very good experiences with mother mary because all i have grown up as looking at virgin mother mary with the baby child in her hand and all my life i have grown up as a young uh, child asking the mother every night before i went to sleep i asked for her protection i asked that i get good dreams i asked that i get good sleep i asked that we all be protected in the home and this is what simple prayers i made to mother mary and anything i wanted in life i used to go and ask mother mary as my mother the cosmic mother so this kind of a practice was within me and i don't find any difference between mother mary or mother sita or parvati or kali these are all the same different uh, the diverse forms of that cosmic intelligence of that same source so i'm telling you, you might call any form and they all work these all forms have worked wonder for me so i i wouldn't want to say that only mother kali then there will be competition oh they are hindu god no no please don't get into all the tactics there is no hindu muslim christian for the cosmic father or the cosmic father the cosmic father also you call him shiva you worship in any form you look at him from any form or if you are more inclined to shiva you can definitely take his form what more powerful than the father himself who looks upon you now it is upon our tendencies whom we invoke if we have got some very strong tendencies then we invoke the fierce forms like mother kali or the rudra roop of shiva maheshwara the mahesh form we can invoke whatever it is invoke in the sense it is nothing that somebody come from outside and get into us it is there within us yes that's the difference it is there within us we are just making it awake jagrit usko jagrit karna hai so the shiva and the shakti the father and the mother are within us we just got to make her active when do you wake up your father and mother at night if you are sleeping and if you hear some thief entering into your house <coughs> or you're scared of something you go and wake up your mother and father till then they are sleeping you don't disturb them you are in your world they are in they are state of mind or their world so when you need them you call out for them when you call out for them your parents will stand for you as simple as that so live with this kind of a bhava this is the best thing that i can offer and advice to you and as i told you these are just my views you don't need to buy it you don't need to believe it or trust it if it contemplate if it uh, uh, relates with your inner being and if you feel yes there is some truth to it then that's your inner being that inner consciousness that's relating with that if not you can try this <coughs> experiment is change your bhava to this and see what happens and then believe in it so i believe i have uh, answered this in the best way i can and now i'm taking your leave stay blessed may the almighty bless us all always in our journey much divine love and light to you